Okay, just a quick video to review some truth tree strategies. These are not necessary things, but they will make doing truth trees much easier and more efficient. We're going to talk about stacking before you branch, closing branches as soon as possible, and hiding your double negation decomposition steps. First, a simple example of stacking before you branch. Suppose we had two fairly simple formulas like this, and we're going to do a tree for them. One way to do it is to decompose the top one first, which obviously branches since it's a disjunction into A on one branch and B on the other branch. Then when we decompose the second formula with a conjunction, we have to stack its two components under each branch like that. And of course, in this case, uh, both branches close, and since all the branches close, the tree is closed, so the original set of two formulas is inconsistent. Uh, and it's not a terribly complex tree, but we could be a little more efficient if, given the same two formulas, since it's up to us which formula to decompose first, let's decompose the conjunction, which is going to stack immediately. And then when we decompose the disjunction, we still get the branching, but we've saved ourselves a little bit of writing. We didn't have to write this stack twice. We only write it once. Now in longer trees, stacking before you branch whenever you can is going to save you a fair bit of complexity. So if you look at the rules on the right hand side, you'll see that anything that is equivalent to a conjunction, conjunction itself, a negated disjunction or a negated conditional is going to stack. So those are the things you want to look for in stacking before you branch. Anything else, the disjunction itself, a negated conjunction, or a conditional is basically a disjunction and so it's going to branch. For the biconditional rules, they branch into two short stacks. So those are basically branching rules, and you want to save them for later if you can. Stack before you branch. For an example of closing a branch as soon as possible, take these three formulas in the trunk of the tree. We're going to stack before we branch, so we'll do this conjunction first. And then we have our choice of either one of those disjunctions. They're both going to branch. We can't avoid it. But suppose we take A or B, and then do D or C next. Now when we read all the way up the branch, we see we've got an A here and a not A here. So both these branches close. And then if we read all the way up the third and fourth branch, we see we've got a C here and a not C there. So that branch closed and the one that the third branch stays open. Now in this case, we could have saved ourselves a little bit of time by realizing when we wrote this A that we had that contradiction, so we could have stopped sooner. That is, as soon as we decomposed that A or B disjunction, if we notice that we've already got the A not A, we can close that branch immediately, and we don't have to do any further work on it because we know it's got a contradiction on it. And so we just have to complete the D or C disjunction on the still open branch, which of course closes, causes a closure there with only the branch ending in D still open. Just saves a little bit of time. And again, in longer, more complex trees, it may save you a good amount of time. Sometimes you can even strategically choose which formula to decompose in order to close a branch early. So if you see that a certain formula will cause a contradiction on a branch and cause it to close, you might decide to choose that. And here's a quick example of what I mean by hiding your double negation decomposition. So if we're going to do the tree for these two formulas, we should stack before we branch. So that negated disjunction is going to stack to hook C. And technically, since the right disjunct already has a hook on it, we need to add a hook, so we get hook hook B. And then we might see, oh, that's a double negation, so we decompose it to a 
B, and then we can take care of this disjunction where we get hook B on one side and A on the other. And of course, this branch closes because of the B not B, and the other branch stays open. But looking here, we know we've got to attach that hook to each of the subcomponents when we decompose, and that one already has a hook. So if you feel comfortable, and it's okay with your instructor, instead of going to hook hook B, you can hide that double negation step and just go straight to B. So that would look like this. Starting again, when we apply negated disjunction decomp to that first formula, we're going to stack not C, and since we know it would go to not not B, we hide the double negation decomposition step and just go straight to B. And then when we decompose this, we get hook B on the left, A on the right, and again, this closes. It saves you just a tiny step, but some students really like to save that space and time. Now, putting it all together into some more complex trees, compare the inefficient way of completing this tree, where we branch before we stack, so we'll take this big disjunction. It is going to branch to, and then if we deal with those disjunctions, again, we get more branching. Now if we go back up and deal with that big conjunction, we're going to have to decompose it on all four of those branches since they're all still open. So we're going to get this. We still have two conjunctions left on each branch we decompose those. Luckily they'll stack, but it's still a lot of writing. So I'm going to go through it real quick here. And that's what we'd end up with doing this tree in the least efficient way. Notice there are some places where we could gain some efficiency. Even without stacking before we branch, we could have closed the tree, this branch right here, because we've got A, not A. Same thing here, because we've got not B, and B. We could have done it here without decomposing this, but this branch takes all the way down to here before it closes. Also, we could have hidden these double negation steps if we'd wanted to. In any case, it's a pretty complicated tree, but we can do much better if we stack before we branch and apply some of the other strategies. Now, um, here is the same pair of formulas again, and we are going to stack before we branch. So we're going to take care of this conjunction and wait on that big disjunction at the top. So that's going to get us this stack. And then we can deal with each of those, which are both going to stack. So let's take that one first. We'll get the not A, not B. And then on this one, we're going to get the C and a not not D, but I'm just going to go straight to D. Now we need to branch to checking off the first formula. Each of those, of course, is going to branch. And now when we read up these branches, we see we've got an A not A on the first branch, a B not B on the second branch, a not C C, and a not D D. We get the same result. Each of the branches close. We still wind up with four branches, but it's a much simpler tree. Here's one last example. Uh, I'm going to do it the least efficient way first, and then I'll show you the more efficient way. So instead of stacking before we branch, I'll just deal with the conditionals in order. They're each going to branch, so we end up with... And then I believe on this last one, we've got D, A, D, not C, B. That one stays open, so that set of formulas is consistent. But it's a massive, ornery tree. If we start again and apply uh, our three main strategies, stack before we branch, close the branch ASAP, and hide our double negation decomposition, we can make a much simpler tree. So in this case, stacking before we branch means dealing with this conjunction first, and then we have to deal with these three conditionals. They're going to branch. We can't avoid it. However, note what happens here. 
the first one decomposes into not A on one branch and B on the other, but we can immediately close that left-hand branch because we've got A not A. We don't have to build any farther down that branch. When we decompose this conditional, we'd branch to not B and not C on one side, but again, that left-hand branch will close, so we don't have to do any further work on it. And then when we decompose the final conditional there, it's going to branch to not not C, which I'm just going to hide my double negation decomposition, go straight to C, and then D on the other side. And of course, that branch closes. We get the exact same result much more simply. There's the open branch on that tree with all three of the others closing, and you notice you get essentially the same result. A and D, B and not C. They appear in a slightly different order because we stacked before we branched, but it's the same result. And we didn't have to do any of this work on the other side. Much more efficient. So, stack before you branch, close each branch as soon as you can, hide your double negation decomposition rule if you like, and always make sure you read all the way up the branch looking for a contradiction. Because for example, over here, the contradictions were pretty far apart. Hope that helps.